Yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks, David. Okay. Um, so welcome to this, albeit a little late, tips and tricks. Uh, as David said, my name is Jeff Hatzel. I'm a senior application specialist at Blue Marble. So for this section, um, we're going to discuss web mapping and some of the online mapping options in Global Mapper. Uh, we will focus on the Mango Map web map publishing tool in Global Mapper, and then towards the end, we'll look at some other options as well, things like the online data tool um, and getting data from Global Mapper to Google Earth. Uh, so to introduce Mango Map a little bit, uh, Mango Map is a cutting edge web map platform. Uh, it's got a great, simple, easy to use user interface. Uh, we'll take a look at that shortly. Um, it's it's an easy way to make engaging and insightful web maps. We partnered with Mango, well, officially, I guess, back in September 2019. So this tool was released uh, in conjunction with version 21 uh, at that time. And so this functionality in Global Mapper uh, allows users to upload map data directly from within the Global Mapper application uh, to an online Mango hosted uh, map site. So this allows it to be easily shared between customers, colleagues, et cetera, kind of across your organization. Uh, it really allows us to increase the flexibility of Global Mapper workspaces. Um, you know, we can provide means to share maps with anyone on any device uh, quickly and easily. So you'll see on my screen here, um, we are in uh, Global Mapper right now looking at a workspace that has some data loaded. Um, we happen to be working with some public data today. It's available from the uh, European Environmental Agency. Um, so free data, um, and we're looking at some uh, air pollution data sets, specifically around Paris. Um, you'll see I have a few layers. Uh, they're stylized differently. Um, oh, a little extra click there. So I have unique styling applied to each layer. Um, that was done very much how Mackenzie outlined in her talk earlier. Um, why that's important to note is that as we build um, our map on the global mapper side of things. You know, we're setting different stylings, uh, different display of data and things like that. Uh, that will all be retained when we publish our data uh, as a Mango map. You'll also notice that I have um, a few point features loaded here. So these are just cities in the region around Paris to give us uh, a reference point. One thing I want to highlight with these is that uh, I've used a new tool that also came out in version 21, allowing me to work with my labels. Um, so what I can do here is select just my labels. I can move them around, place them as I need. Um, this allows me to work with them a little bit more hands-on. Um, I can adjust their font, their styling, things like that. So just a great little new tool that allows me to, to further customize my map um, for display purposes. So once our data is set and we have our map displayed as we would like, we'll say, um, you know, okay, I do have that ready to go here. Um, that's when we then look to um, the Mango Map Publishing tool. So that tool has an icon on our toolbar by default. Um, it's called Publish to Mango Map, and it will be stylized with the uh, Mango logo. When I open this tool, uh, what we get prompted with is our map connection manager. So this is where you may work between different Mango map accounts. If you have one, you can edit them, add them, kind of however you need to manage your accounts would be done here. In this case, we're gonna just work with this account that I have set up. So all we need to do is confirm that account by selecting okay. And we'll then see our standard global mapper export window. So we might want to um, give our map a name and a, a description so we can sort it out from the others on our Mango map page. One of the really nice options we have here is the ability to choose a base map. So Mango map as we'll see shortly, has a variety of built-in base map options. Um, we allow you to choose from a few of those uh, to set a default base map when that map is viewed online. Another very useful setting is the option to, to choose where you're centering your map. So you may have a map over a very large extent, but you're zoomed into a certain region to start with. So for example, um, if I had zoomed all the way into Paris here, I could enable this option and that would allow me um, 
anytime I open that map on the web, it would, it would retain that zoom. In this case, we'll leave our data as is. Uh, when, that, uh, when that upload process starts after clicking OK, um, you'll see a status of that. And at the end, you will um, receive a report. That report will tell you um, that your upload succeeded. It will also automatically um, copy a URL to your map uh, right to your clipboard. So you don't have to worry about having that memorized. So let's switch over now. We'll uh, take a look at the mango side of things here. And so first thing we'll look at before we get into looking at our map is the mango map portal. I just want to take a brief look here. So this is your landing page for your mango account. We're looking at our demo portal. Um, you'll see the left hand side here. That's where we would address, um, you know, any overall settings and things for our accounts. You'll notice maps that have been published, they will by default get a thumbnail, uh, give you a little preview of the map. All our unpublished maps say that they're offline. Uh, we're gonna take a look at one of those right now. So we're gonna look at the Paris air quality map. When we pop that map open here, uh, we'll see again, it's retained uh, the zoom, the styling, the display, just like I had set in Global Mapper. First thing we might wanna take a look at is our toolbar uh, docked on the left here. So by default, this, or excuse me, on the right-hand side of the screen, um, by default, what we'll see is our map legend. So I can see not only were, uh, was all my styling retained in my color schemes, I can turn those layers on and off and interact with them very similar to how I would in Global Mapper. Uh, we'll see that my labels and my points split from them are also retained. So I have unique layers for those features here too. If for some reason I don't like my base map, I can go right in and edit my base map. So maybe I prefer more of a terrain approach. Um, my map will re-render and set that now as the base map. Uh, Mango also gives us access to some more GIS related tools. So maybe I need to make a measurement on my map. So I want to measure, in this case, I'll measure area. I'll then get a report of the area in that region. I could do the same thing um, for a more linear distance as well. A couple more things I'd like to highlight on the Mango side to show us kind of how a complete of a tool this is to complement Global Mapper. Um, in the toolbox, so we saw the measuring tool. Uh, I'm also a fan of the mouse highlight tool. This tool allows me to select a layer and have it highlighted as I cursor over it. So I can very quickly see um, what layer is now highlighted under my cursor, what features are there. Independent of this highlight, I can click on any, any feature on my map and we'll get a pop-up showing us the associated attribute information. So in this case, in this sample area for, uh, we're looking at, I think the uh, nit nitrogen dioxide layer, um, I can see the population in that sample area and the average uh, concentration of my particular uh, pollutant in this region. That again, does not have to be tied to a highlighted feature. Uh, any clickable feature can be interacted with. So for the city, we see it's rough location and the population of that city. Uh, when we looked at the data originally, we saw that we had two different layers here. We were looking at two different pollutant types. Um, that's when the comparison tool becomes very handy. Um, it allows me to swipe data on and off so I can see um, two different types of data displayed one on top of the other. You know, in this case, we're looking at um, two different attributes or two different pollutants, but you could also envision um, how this could be useful if we're thinking about change over time. So maybe I'm making some different change maps. We saw um, a bunch of users earlier today discussing looking at change over time. So displaying that change data here to um, using that swipe tool. If I wanted to show a little bit more, you know, GIS geographic information, uh, my toolbox allows me the options to show my mouse position on my map. So wherever my cursor moves, we'll notice now that my latitude and longitude of the cursor are displayed. Uh, same idea goes for my scale bar. So as I interact with my map and I zoom in and out, 
um, we'll see that my scale bar adjusts dynamically with me. You know, when I first created this map and was prepping things, I noticed I had some typos here and I didn't want to have to go all the way back into Global Mapper. Instead, what I can do is I can edit all of my layers uh, as part of my menu. I can get it to some advanced editing up here, or in my case, I just had to edit some descriptions and some zoom levels. So I only wanted data um, to display at certain zooms and things like that. I can adjust that as well. Same thing would apply for base maps and legends, or you know, if we need to get into any more global settings for my map, whether I'm thinking about titles, layouts, I can customize toolbar panels. Um, I know we have some users who their thumbnail is always their company logo, so you can update custom thumbnails and things like that. So the Mango Map set of things gives us a great um, interface to further work with, display, and refine our maps that we've made into, into web maps now. And so just to wrap up on the Mango side of things, we'll go back into Global Mapper. Um, you know, again, Mango gives us a great way um, to publish a map that you've created in Global Mapper uh, and make a web map from it. I didn't get into all the, the Mango functionality for the sake of time today, um, but these maps can be further customized. One thing that's worth pointing out, um, they can be shared with certain URLs, so you can give certain people certain access to certain maps and things like that. Uh, it's really a great tool to bring some web mapping functionality right uh, into Global Mapper. We'll change gears a little bit. And so we've talked about, you know, getting data out of Global Mapper, but what about if I need, maybe I don't have data and I need data for a certain region. Um, that's where we see users start to look at one of, I think one of our most popular tools, that's the online data tool. Um, this provides us with a way to connect to a variety of uh, web hosted sources within Global Mapper. Um, the vast majority of them are free sources, they're publicly available, um, and they're hosted on thir by, by third parties. So we've added connections to a, a wide variety of common ones uh, that our users can access. You know, maybe for your region, you need to find a certain amount, uh, certain terrain data for your area. So you can dig into the terrain data uh, section and find uh, any associated data there that you may need. We'll look at some imagery data in a second. All this data, you can customize how you need to download and access it, whether we're talking in a certain screen bounds, uh, certain locations, uh, or you know, even if you have a certain area feature selected, you only want to download within that certain area feature, uh, you can do that as well. I do want to highlight we have some premium content in here. Um, most recently, with the release of version 21.1, we now have a partnership with Blackbeard Oil and Gas. So if you subscribe to their services, um, you can connect to their data sources right within this tool. Uh, the same goes for the Intermap uh, NextMap Elevation sources. So if you subscribe to those sources as well, you can um, connect to that data and stream it right into the application. So earlier, um, I connected to some base imagery. Um, anytime we connect to a web map, that data loads into our control center just as we would see um, any other data set. Uh, as I zoom in and out with that data, it will pan and keep up with my zoom level and where I'm focused, so I always have uh, that data on screen with me. So that, that tool really just gives us a great way to access um, data we, we may not have. Um, and another thing I want, I want to highlight kind of as a tangent to that is, so I have all the data I need, I have my data sets, but the people that I'm sharing my maps with, um, they're very beginner GIS people and they don't have Global Mapper, they don't have Mango Map, but they know how to use Google Earth. Um, we can very easily get data out of Global Mapper and into Google Earth um, so that we can share it effectively. Uh, any data set that you have loaded right within Global Mapper can be exported um, to the KML or KMZ format. So that would be uh, the native formats that Google Earth uses. Um, a variety of settings to go along with these exports as with most exports in Global Mapper, um, allowing you to export that data uh, as you need it to be handled. 
once that data is exported, most users would then open Google Earth, load that data in and take a look at it. And I've done that already and we'll take a, a look at that shortly, but I want to highlight uh, another tool that kind of pairs with it nicely. So under our view menu in Global Mapper, we have this little option that's called Zoom to View in Google Earth. Uh, what this would do, and it does require you to have Google Earth installed, um, but what it does is it just takes your area of interest, whatever you're zoomed in on in Global Mapper, and it zooms to that view in Google Earth. So when I click on this, normally it would launch Google Earth and zoom me to that region. Now, since I already have Google Earth open, all it's going to do is adjust my zoom and zoom in on data that I have loaded into um, Google Earth. So if I click on this quickly enough, we'll see that my Google Earth view will eventually shift over and zoom into exactly um, where I was looking within Global Mapper. I have had already preloaded those two data sets, but we can see they're accessible here. I can toggle them on and off. They're you know, part of that live streamed Google data, um, easily shareable now with um, anybody who has access to Google Earth, they can, they can access this data. So to wrap up a bit, um, we've looked at a few different ways we can um, use Mango to publish web maps. Um, we've looked at online access to sources of data using the online data tool. Um, and then also exporting data to Google Earth um, as a variety of different ways to interact with data outside of just Global Mapper, um, more of a web-based interface. The last thing I'll mention before I wrap up is that we do have options. You know, we have a lot of users who connect to maybe not traditional web sources, um, but maybe a spatial database hosted on their company server. Um, you can build spatial database connections into Global Mapper. Um, there's also options a bit beyond the scope of this, um, but the ability to connect to Amazon Web Services as well if you're storing data there. Um, so with that, I'll wrap up this section. Unmuted. Everything back to David. If any questions did come in, I'm happy to answer that. Yeah, just, just one, Jeff. That's uh, it, it. Kind of ex exposes a very important part of of kind of geospatial industry in general is the data sharing options and being able to deploy and share data on a web platform obviously makes it all the more accessible for uh, folks who do not have a copy of Global Mapper themselves. Shame on them. Mm -hmm. uh, just one question, <laughs> Jeff. That's worth noting. Uh, uh, the Going back to the Mango, uh, asking mm -hmm. about the pricing of Mango, I think I think maybe having someone go to the web is probably the best bet as far as pricing. It is a subscription-based service, um, but if you go to our website, we do have a, a special uh, setup for uh, subscribing to Mango from Global Mapper, and you can see the pricing there. Um, someone also asked about a trial, Jeff. I don't know if you want to address that. If that's uh, I don't know, actually, off the top of my head, if we offer a trial for... Uh, the Mango service. Yeah, I, think we do. I think that is an option. You can certainly try it out. Um, sorry for broadsiding with a question there, Jeff. But yeah, you can you yeah, can no, try, okay. try try out the Mango platform and uh, uh, see if it works for you. Again, for for sharing data in either within your organization or out facing to the general public, it gives you it gives you Global Mapper Maps kind of a, a worldwide exposure. Thank you, Jeff. Yep, you're welcome, Dave.